Thomas Alive Today presents 10 Much More Defunct Dead Retail Stores. L.S. Ayers & Company was a department store based in Indianapolis, Indiana, and founded in 1872 by Lyman S. Ayers. Over the years its Indianapolis flagship store, which opened in 1905 and was later enlarged, became known for its women's fashions, the tea room, holiday events and displays, and the basement budget store. As urban population shifted to the suburbs, Ayers established branch stores and new shopping centers in several Indiana cities. Ayers also acquired retail subsidiaries in Springfield, Illinois, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Louisville, Kentucky. Airway, the Ayers Discount Store subsidiary, became the first discount store launched by a full-line department store. By the end of the 1960s Ayers had become a diversified merchandising business with retail department stores, a chain of discount stores, specialty clothing stores, a home furnishing showroom, and a real estate holding company. A long-time Ayers slogan, that Ayers look, promoted the company as a fashion leader, and by 1972 it had become the oldest continuous retail slogan in the United States. Associated Dry Goods acquired Ayers in 1972. After the May Company acquired Associated Dry Goods in 1986, several Ayers stores were closed. The flagship store in Indianapolis was closed in the spring of 1992 as the remaining Ayers operation merged with May's famous bar division. Federated Department Stores, owner of rival Macy's, acquired the May Company on August 30, 2005. On February 1, 2006, L. S. Ayers was dissolved and folded into the newly formed Macy's Midwest Division. On September 9, 2006, the L. S. Ayers name was retired as most stores were converted to Macy's. Bullock's was founded in 1907 at 7th and Broadway in downtown Los Angeles by John G. Bullock, with the support of the Broadway department store owner Arthur Letts. In 1923, Bullock and business partner P.G. Winnett bought out Let's Interest after his death and the companies became completely separated. In 1929 Bullock and Winnett opened a luxury branch on Wilshire Boulevard, referred to at the time as Bullock's Wilshire. In 1944 Bullock's acquired I. Magnin & Company, a venerable San Francisco-based upscale specialty chain. In 1964 the then-public-owned Bullock's slash I. Magnin Organization was acquired by Federated Department Stores, much to the dismay of surviving founder P.G. Winnett, who publicly lambasted the deal. In the 1970s, to differentiate itself from the full-line Bullock stores, the very exclusive Wilshire location dropped its apostrophe, and became Bullock's Wilshire, and began its own expansion. Bullock's, Bullock's Wilshire, and iMagnon retained their autonomy under Federated, as well as their carriage trade niche, with iMagnon expanding into the Chicago and Washington DC metropolitan areas and Bullock's opening stores in Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Northern California. In 1983 however, Federated shuttered the Bullock's North Division and sold most of its locations to Seattle, Washington retailer Nordstrom. In 1988, after an ugly takeover battle between Robert Campo and Macy's for Federated, Bullock's and iMagnon were sold by Campo to Macy's as a consolation prize for $1 billion, which plunged Macy's into debt. The new owners responded by dismantling Bullock's Los Angeles corporate offices, merging Bullock's Wilshire into iMagnon, and Bullock's into its Macy's South Division, sending what had been Federated's most profitable division into a precipitous decline in alienating customers. The end came quickly for Bullock's after Macy's filed for bankruptcy in 1992, with the Bullock's Wilshire stores being renamed iMagnon two years before. Underperforming iMagnon and Bullock's locations were closed, and iMagnon itself was dissolved in January 1995 once Federated Department stores reappeared on the scene and acquired Macy's. In 1996 following the acquisition of Broadway Stores Incorporated, Federated consolidated all its traditional department store business in California under the Macy's nameplate, ending 89 years of Bullock's. In 1870, with a $500 investment, the Goldsmith Brothers opened a dry goods store at 163 Beale Street. The store relocated in 1895 to a larger facility at 125 Main, which it occupied through most of the 20th century. In 1952 Goldsmiths renovated its downtown location, expanding into the adjoining former Gayoso Hotel and adding a new facade. The downtown store was closed in 1993. The department store began to build suburban locations in the 1960s, beginning with its three-story Oak Court store at Poplar and Perkins which opened in 1961. 
This location was expanded in the early 1970s, when a three-story addition was constructed immediately to the west of the existing store. The upper two levels of this structure served as parking, while the bottom level was connected to the first floor of the existing store and served as additional retail space. In the late 1970s, Goldsmiths once again expanded with an addition of the original building to the north. This addition contained two floors of above-ground retail space. The Oak Court Mall opened in 1988 and was connected to the freestanding Goldsmiths. At the same time, another two-story retail addition was constructed to the north of the original building which eventually became the Goldsmiths Furniture Gallery. This brought the store to nearly 400,000 square feet of retail space, now one of the largest Macy's locations in the country. Goldsmiths continued to branch out with the construction of its 130,000 square feet Southland Mall location, which opened on August 23, 1966. August 1971 saw the opening of the fourth Goldsmiths store, located at the new Raleigh Springs Mall in North Memphis. By 1978, Goldsmiths occupied 800,000 square feet of retail space and 200,000 square feet of warehouse space in the city. In 1981, Goldsmiths opened its fifth store at the new Hickory Ridge Mall in southeast Memphis. The first Goldsmiths store built outside of the city of Memphis was at the old Hickory Mall in Jackson, Tennessee, about 85 miles away from Memphis. The last Goldsmiths store to be built was at Wolfchase Galleria, which opened in 1997. Goldsmiths was acquired by Federated Department Stores in 1959, and added in 1988 to an Atlanta, Georgia headquarter division led by that city's richest chain. The division expanded to include Cincinnati, Ohio-based Lazarus in 1995, with all of the division co-branded with Macy's in 2003. At the time of the name change to Macy's, five Goldsmiths stores remained in existence. Macy's current employee volunteer program, Partners in Time, was founded in 1989 at Goldsmiths as a way to give back to the community. This retail mercantile business was founded in 1905 as Julius Garfinkel and Company by Julius Garfinkel, originally employing 10 clerks. The store opened on October 2, 1905, at 1226 F Street Northwest in Washington, D.C. By August 1924, the spelling of the store name was modified to Julius Garfinkel & Company in 1946. It acquired the men's specialty retailer, Brooks Brothers and in 1950, Depena. It formed the national retail conglomerate, Garfinkel, Brooks Brothers, Miller & Rhodes Incorporated, after acquisition of the Miller & Rhodes chain in 1967. In 1977, the conglomerate acquired the Ann Taylor women's fashion store chain. In 1981, the conglomerate consisted of close to 190 stores and seven chains. That same year, Allied Stores acquired Garfinkel, Brooks Brothers, Miller & Rhodes Incorporated for $228 million. In 1986, Compo Corporation acquired Allied, and in turn sold the Garfinkels chain to locally owned Raleigh's for $95 million, forming Garfinkels, Raleigh's & Company. Garfinkel's grew and expanded into a chain of stores, but was eventually pushed into financial collapse due to a series of mergers and acquisitions. On June 21, 1990, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy by its chairman and CEO George P. Kelly and went out of business. In 1983, Elliott Stone opened the first West Coast video store in Northeast Philadelphia. During the next three months, Stone established the chain by launching three more stores. West Coast Video acquired all 455 national video stores in September 1988. The chain now had 660 stores in total, making it the world's largest video rental chain at that time. West Coast Video had a revenue of $250 million in 1990. The chain opened its first Canadian store in 1991. It was located in the Orleans neighborhood of Ottawa, Ontario. However, West Coast faced financial difficulties due to increased competition in the video rental industry. The company reported a $120 million revenue in 1991, less than half of what it made the previous year. The company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in March 1992 and had a positive cash flow six months later. In 1993, the West Coast Video Company changed its name to West Coast Entertainment Corporation. It would eventually create additional brands. During that same year, a second store in Canada was opened in Ottawa South neighborhood of Ottawa. The Game Power Headquarters video game franchise was launched in 1994. 
Online websites for West Coast Video were launched in May 1999. This included an online shopping store that sold movies. Both Blu-ray and HD DVD movies were offered at West Coast Video in the mid to late 2000s due to the high-definition optical disc format war happening at the time. Games for the three most popular 7th generation consoles were also added to the store's inventory. Both of these major additions to inventory placed a financial burden on the chain. In January 2007, the West Coast video chain was down to only 20 locations in the United States. Five of these would close before the end of the year, another three prior to May 2008, and yet another three by the end of 2008. The chain finished in 2008, with only nine locations in the United States. In 2009, the chain ceased to exist and although remaining stores could keep the West Coast video brand name, they were now independent video rental stores. Currently West Coast Video is only active in Peru. It operates solely as a DVD by mail company, with no physical storefronts. Merry-Go-Round was a national clothing retail chain owned by Merry-Go-Round Enterprises Incorporated that thrived from the 1970s through the early 1990s. The chain fell into bankruptcy during the mid-1990s and eventually ceased operation in 1996. It was famous for its ability to profit from short-lived fashion fads and also owned men's clothing retailer Silverman's by purchasing 273 stores from Retail Ventures Incorporated, parent of American Eagle Outfitters, in 1989. In May 1993, it purchased the Chess King clothing chain from the Melville Corporation. It filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1994 and began liquidation sales by February 1996. At its end, the company operated just over 500 locations, primarily in enclosed malls. Their mid-1980s commercials parodied quiet riots come on feel the noise, with teens and young adults walking down a hallway with massive sized speakers blaring the song. Merry-Go-Round's unsuccessful reorganization led to the 1998 lawsuit Devon v. Ernst & Young against Ernst & Young for violating the standard of care as turnaround advisor. The case resulted in the largest single defendant settlement in Maryland history. The company was founded by Sandy and Michael Bloomberg who opened the first store in the Boston area in 1972, and the company quickly expanded throughout New England. Tweeter continued expanding largely through acquisitions, the first of these being Bryn Mawr Stereo in 1996. It then added Atlanta-based Hi-Fi Buys in 1997, San Diego-based Al Stereo Slash Video in 1999, Chicago-based United Audio Center and Douglas TV Stores in 2000 and Florida-based Sound Advice in 2001. These acquisitions gave Tweeter an instant presence in the Southeast and Midwest during a booming housing market. In March 2007, Tweeter announced the closing of 49 stores and the layoffs of 650 employees, and shuttered all of its stores in California and most of its stores in the Southeast. In June 2007 Tweeter Home Entertainment filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection and its assets were purchased by Schultz Asset Management at auction on July 13, 2007, after a failed reorganization plan. Schultz reformed the company as Tweeter Opco LLC. After an attempt to revive the company, Tweeter Opco filed for Chapter 11 on November 5, 2008. Prior to filing the company had started going out of business sales in anticipation of the holiday season. However, a dispute among creditors regarding operating cash to continue the sales forced the closure of all stores on December 3, 2008, the firing of all 600 employees and the company filed a conversion of its Chapter 11 reorganization to a Chapter 7 liquidation. Customers reported paid goods and deposits were part of frozen assets which eventually forced them to file as creditors in the liquidation. In 1921, Frida Lohman, a former department store buyer, and her son Charles, opened the first Lohman store in a former automobile showroom on the northwest corner of Bedford Avenue and Sterling Place in Brooklyn, New York. She bought seasonal overstocks from top New York designers and sold them at bargain prices. Frida refused to expand into additional stores, but her son opened a second store, also called Lomans, on Fordham Road in the Bronx in 1930, using the same sales strategy. Frida continued to run the original store, buying the building and moving into living quarters above it. Soon after her death in 1962, the Bedford Avenue store was closed, and the Charles C. Lohman Company went public and began to expand to a wider area. 
Lomans was acquired by Associated Dry Goods in 1983. In 1986, the May Department Stores Company merged with Associated Dry Goods. Two years later, May Department Stores Company sold the 77-unit chain to an investor group led by a Spanish concern, Sfinco Limited, and the Sprout Group, a division of Donaldson, Lufkin, and Genred. The company was taken public again in May 1996 and at its peak in 1999, the company had approximately 100 stores in 17 states. Lomans filed for bankruptcy in December 2013 like two times before in 1999 and 2010, but third time they did not survive and started liquidation sales on January 8, 2014. Once the merchandise was liquidated, all stores were closed and Esipus Creek, the private equity fund which had bought the rights to the Lomans name, continued to operate the company as an online retailer. On August 4, 2018, Lomans.com ceased operations after a period of showing an under construction page. Eckerd Corporation was an American pharmacy retail chain that was headquartered in Largo, Florida, and toward the end of its life, in Warwick, Rhode Island. At its peak, Eckerd was the second largest pharmacy chain in the United States, with approximately 2,802 stores in 23 states as far west as Arizona. An independent chain for most of its existence, Eckerd was purchased by J.C. Penney in 1996. Following years of losses and failed attempts to turn around the company, the chain was divided in 2004, with 1,271 of its stores, and its mail-order business, sold to competitor CVS, and the remainder acquired by Jean Coutu Group. Jean Coutu sold the chain to Rite Aid in 2007, and its name was phased out soon thereafter. Kinney Shoes was the largest family chain shoe retailer in the United States at the beginning of 1936, with 335 stores operating nationwide. Although it was selling more shoes at the conclusion of 1936 than in 1929, its dollar volume was 20% to 30% below 1929. On August 31, 1963, the G.R. Kinney Company was sold to F.W. Woolworth. Prior to this it was a subsidiary of the Brown Shoe Company which sold it for $45 million. The firm was renamed the Kinney Shoe Corporation and continued as a fully owned subsidiary of Woolworth. It retained its own 11-member board of directors and an existing panel of corporate officers. The company continued operating throughout the 1960s and 1970s with divisions named Styleco, Suzy Casuals, and Foot Locker. On September 16, 1998, the Venator Group, formerly known as Woolworth, announced that Kinney's 467 shoe stores and 103 footquarters stores would close. The Foot Locker division, started in 1974, continues to this day, with Venator changing its name in 2001 to Foot Locker. Foot Locker also maintains the trademarks of the Kinney and Woolworth brands. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.